Hey everybody and welcome back to Recon Ace Land. My name is Jules and today we're gonna have a first look at the game Rogue Legacy 2. The game just came out and as you may have guessed by its name, it is sort of a roguelike game. However, the developers called it a roguelite game. But why is that? In lots of roguelike games, you lose every sort of progress that you made whenever you die in the game. Unlike most games where you can still keep playing from your last checkpoint or anything similar. In this game, it is a mixture of those two. You do lose all your progress you made in the dungeon that you're playing in, but you still have something at home, your castle, that you can build with the money that you earned. In Rogue Legacy 2 you play as one out of multiple classes that you can unlock throughout the game, and when you die, you are being replaced by one of your heirs. This way you don't have to start anew after your death. Not completely at least. Your heir still gets to spend your inheritance on for example castle upgrades, blacksmith upgrades, so new equipment for example, and also different gemstones that also further increase your powers. The gameplay itself is an amazing mixture of platforming, hack and slay, and quite some puzzles that you really need to use your brain for. The dungeon that you're playing in is regenerated every time you play it, so there's a completely new random dungeon. Some rooms are similar to one another because they're relevant to the story or have some certain items hidden in them, but they're always in different locations and your path there is always unclear. A typical run in Rogue Legacy 2, so one lifespan, consists of you platforming and either dodging your enemies or attacking them, or usually dodging their attacks and then attacking them. But there are quite some character traits that can make this a bit more complicated. Some of those traits will make your life easier, some will make it harder, and some are just fun to look at. For example, there's the IBS trait, which converts your class skill into a, well, I call it fart rocket for obvious reasons, which even burns your enemies. Another trait, which is quite annoying but also pretty fun, is the Diva trait. The Diva trait means that you have a spotlight cast on you. This spotlight makes the rest of the game area a lot darker though, so you can't really see much of your surroundings except for enemies who for some reason also have a little spotlight on them. The upside to it all is that whenever you kill an enemy you get roses thrown at you, and if that doesn't make up for it, then I don't know either. Another trait that's quite fun to look at is one that makes the whole game appear in more of a retro look. This retro look makes it harder to actually understand what's going on around you, but it gives the game quite some cool vibes. Whenever you start a new run, you have to start at the beginning of the dungeon again, but the upside to that is that you still keep your level. Whenever you upgrade something in your castle, you basically gain a level up, which increases your base stats, and at the same time, you also keep all the equipment that you found and crafted, and also the gems that you already crafted. The difficulty of the enemies in the dungeon is scaling depending on how far away from the entrance you are, except of course when you are in special areas, or meet special, let's call them mini-bosses, which are basically normal enemies but in a stronger form. Meeting these mini-bosses is actually quite some fun too. The room is usually having a special layout where it's more interesting to fight the enemy, and while the enemy is still similar to the original, so you kind of know it already, it still gives you some extra challenge and makes you feel even better if you beat it. My personal favorite feature about the game, however, are the so-called heirloom dungeons or heirloom challenges. Basically, you accept an heirloom challenge in the middle of a normal run. When you do this, your mana and your health are recovered fully, and you start a special challenge. Completing these challenges gives you new abilities that help you further progress in the dungeon. These abilities help you immensely, not only when crawling through the dungeon, but some of them are also necessary to really progress. And the best thing of all, you keep them for your heirs too, so they're never lost again. So why do I like these heirloom challenges so much? Well, it is because it combines all of the game's main features. It gives us all the great platforming that we love, it gives us all the great hack and slay that we love, and it's some extra challenge, because we just unlocked a new ability and we don't quite know how to use it yet. To really unlock this heirloom and keep it forever, we need to put it to good use right after getting it. We need to use it for platforming, for insanely hard puzzles, as well as for fights that require some extra strategy, because in these special fights we really need to use that new ability in order to trick our enemies. Some extra variety in the game is given to us with the class system. Not only do we have multiple different classes, but we also only have three heirs we can choose from whenever we die. This means that we don't always have every class available, which is a way of the game to sort of force us into learning new tactics. Every class has its up and downsides, and class skills may even help you overcome certain challenges and certain rules that you wouldn't have been able to overcome without those classes. 
Now it needs to be said that this game is still early access. The developers stated that after they published the first part of Rogue Legacy, the community feedback was intense. There were so many great ideas coming on how to still improve the game, that they now decided to publish the second part, also rather early, to still get community feedback in and implement those great ideas. To sum this up, Rogue Legacy 2 is an amazing game if you like either roguelike games or any sort of platformers or dungeon crawlers, because they are all unified in this game. Luckily, even if you die and although you lose your progress, it doesn't feel so terrible like it would in other roguelike games because you really feel the progress you're making with every run. Now I'm wondering, what kind of character traits would you like to see that aren't in the game yet? However weird they may be, as long as they have some influence on the game that you can think of, I'd really like to hear them. And you never know, maybe the developers may stumble upon those ideas and implement them into the game. If you really enjoy Rogue Legacy 2, or if you're not sure yet if you want to buy the game, I just started an uncut let's play of the game, be free to check it out. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a thumbs up and share it with people you think may like the game. Until we see each other again, have a great day, great morning, great evening, and of course an awesome night, depending on what time it is for you right now, and enjoy Rogue Legacy 2.